الطلبة محاضرتنا تتعلق بـ GIT Parasite Infections The objectives of the, uh, uh, this presentation is uh, first the list common intestinal protozoa second the list of the common intestinal elements and the silent morphological features routes and modes of the uh, transmission third laboratory diagnosis for management of the common parasitic infection infections including the prevention strategies we talking about the parasite is an organism that obtains food and shelter from another organism and derives all the benefit from this association now we can classify the parasites into several types the first type is the obligate parasite in which when it can live only in a host while the facultative parasite when it's the parasite can live both in a host as well as in a free form parasite that live inside the body are termed endoparasite what else those that exist on the body surface are called the ectoparasite the other classification of the parasite the parasite can be classified into pathogenic and commensals the pathogenic in, in the parasite uh, uh, is those parasites that cause uh, cause harm to the host uh, while those uh, that benefit from the host without causing it any harm are known as the commensals. The organisms that harpose the parasite and suffer a lose is co caused by the parasite is the host. While the host in which the parasite lives its adult and sexual stage is the definitive host, whereas the host in which a parasite lives as the larval and a sexual stage is the intermediate host. Other hosts that help the parasites and thus ensure continuity of the parasite's life cycle and act as the additional sources of the human infection uh, are known as the reservoir host while the uh, organism who are usually the insects that is responsible for the transmitting the parasitic infection infection is known as the victor and then the other partner of this relationship is the host and the host can be classified to several types and these types either be definitive, intermediate, reservoir, and the vector host. The classification of the parasites are usually classified into uh, uh, two uh, subkingdoms, the protozoa and metazoa. The protozoa is a unicellular organism, بينما المتازوا هي multicellular. The protozoa are uh, uh, divided into several types: sarcodina, like amoeba; sporozoa, اللي هي sporozoans; mastigophora, flagellates; and ciliata, اللي هي ciliates. While the metazoa will be classified or divided into platyhelminth and nematelminths. The platyhelminths are the flat worms, بينما nematelminths اللي هي round worms. Other uh, classified, it's the platyhelminths will be uh, divided into trematoda and cystoda. Now we're talking about the first uh, uh, kingdom or subkingdom, the protozoa, are unicellular eukaryotes that form an entire kingdom. Classifying protozoa parasite into taxonomic groups is an uh, ongoing process and their status is often in a state of the flux. For this reasons, the parasitic, parasitic protozoa uh, separate into four traditional groups based on their means of the locomotion and mode of their production. And these groups are the flagellates, amoeba, sporozoa, and ciliates. Now we're talking about the flagellates. 
وفروم ذا احنا قلنا البروتوز هو ستقسم بالاعتماد على اللوكوموشن لذلك الفلاجيليت من اسمها هاف وان اور مور ويب لايك فلاجيلا اند ان سام كيسز ان اندوليتنج ممبرين الغشاء المتموج والمثال عليها هو التريبانوسوما These include intestinal and genitourinary flagellates اللي هي الجياردية والتراكومونس respectively and blood and tissue flagellate like tribonosoma and leishmania The other group is the amoeba are typically amoeboid and use pseudopodia for protoplasmic follow uh, to move They are represented in humans by species of entamoeba, nigellaria, and acanth amoeba. The third uh, type is the sporozoa. Undergo a complex life cycle with alternating sexual and asexual reproductive phases. The human parasite like Cryptosporidium, Cyclospora, Toxoplasma. And the malaria parasite, اللي هو the Plasmodium species, are all intracellular parasites. While the fourth group, the ciliates, are complex protozoa bearing cilia distributed in row or patches, with two kind of nuclei in each individual, like Plantidium coli, اللي هي giant intestinal ciliate of the humans and humans and pigs. Is the only human parasite representative of this group? We were talking about the first species of Protozoa, which uh, is Giardia lambilia, intestinal flagellates. Giardia lambilia, also referred to as Giardia duodenalis or Giardia intestinalis. Is the causative agent of the giardiasis and is the only common pathogenic protozoa found in the duodenum and duodenum of the human. Giardia exists in two forms, either be trophozoids and the cyst forms. Yani during its life cycle, uh, found in two two stage. The first stage is the trophozoid and the second stage is the cyst. The trophozoid of Giardia lambilia is the heart-shaped uh, organism, has four pairs of the flagella, and is approximately uh, 15 micrometer in length. A large having a large concave sucking disc on the ventral surface helps the organism to adhere to the intestinal villi. As the parasite pass into the colon, they typically insist and the cysts are passed in the stool. They are ellipsoid, thick walled, highly resistant, and uh, 8 to 14 micrometer in length. They contain two nuclei as a mature forms and four as the mature forms. Yani trophozoid we can see in the fresh uh, sample, stool sample, it's a heart shape uh, organism has uh, uh, eight uh, flagella uh, and have uh, uh, concave uh, sucking disc اللي موجود على the ventral surface اللي uh, help the organism in adhere to the intestinal villi. While the other uh, stage اللي هو cyst is a stage اللي يكون highly resistant and having uh, two nuclei uh, uh, إذا كان موجود as a mature form and يحتوي أيضا على four nuclei when it's found as the mature cyst. The life cycle of the Giardia lambilia pass its life cycle in uh, just one host. The infective form of Giardia lambilia is the mature cyst. While the mode of the transmission uh, is uh, the man will be acquire infection by ingestion of the cyst in the contaminated water and food. Also, the other way to uh, get infection uh, is direct from person to person uh, may also occur, uh, occur uh, in the children. 
within half an hour of ingestion the cyst will be hatched out into two trophozoid which multiply successively by binary fission and colonize in the duodenum the trophozoid live in the duodenum and uh, upper parts of the duodenum and feeding by binocytosis during unfavorable condition in system uh, in occur usually in the colon cysts are passed in the stool and remain available in soil and water for several weeks there may be about 200,000 cysts will be passed per gram of the feces so the infective dose of the GRDL ambilia is about 10 to 100 cysts. Now we're talking about the pathology and pathogenesis of the GRDL ambilia is typically seen within the crypts of the duodenum and duodenum mucosa. It does not invade the tissue but remains tightly adhered to the intestinal epithelium by means of the sucking disc. Uh, they may cause uh, abnormalities of the villus architecture by cell apoptosis and increase lymphatic infiltration of the lamina propria. The, ha the GRD having a specific protein on its, uh, its uh, surface uh, called the variant specific surface protein VSSP uh, which play an important role in the virulence and infectivity of the parasite. The GRD uh, lambilia, uh, uh, it's often they are asymptomatic. But in some cases, GRD may lead to mucus, diarrhea, fat malabsorption, dull epigastric pain, and flutiness, the stools containing excess mucus and fat, but there is no blood. Children may develop chronic diarrhea, malabsorption of fat, vitamin A protein, sugar, like xylose, disaccharides, weight loose, uh, occasionally, GRD may colonize the gallbladder, causing pilary colic and jaundice. Now we're talking about the laboratory diagnosis of the GRD lambilia, which including uh, stool examination, entero test, serological test, and molecular diagnosis. The stool examination, including the macroscopic examination and microscopic examination of the stent preparation. The other technique, depending on the intero test, also known as the syringe uh, test, it's a useful method for obtaining duodenal specimen is the intero test. Uh, this technique, including a coiled thread inside a small weighted gelatin capsule, and this capsule will be swallowed by the patient and after attaching the free end of the thread in the check, the capsule passes through the stomach to the duodenum and after two hours the thread is withdrawn and placed in saline. Then will be centrifuge to uh, deposit of the saline is examined uh, for giardia. The use of the enterotes is not recommended because of these uh, of the very high cost of the test. The other test laboratory diagnosis of the GRD anomalia depending on the serological test, which including either be antigen detection or antibody detection. In the antigen detection, depending on the ELISA, the here enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and uh, uh, immunochromatographic uh, uh, strip test and indirect in, uh, uh, immunofluorescence, the here IIF test, which using to the monoclonal antibodies have been developed for detection of the GRD antigen in the feces. The other uh, technique depending on the antibody detection is the ELISA 
and I uh, uh, and IIF test, and these uh, are important demonstration of the antibodies uh, which are uh, useful in the epidemiological and uh, uh, pathophysiological studies. But these tests cannot differentiate between recent and past infection and lack sensitivity and specificity. Finally, the, it's the molecular diagnosis of the Giardia lambilia, which depending on the uh, using of the DNA probes and polymerase chain reaction, PCR, which have been used to demonstrate parasitic genome in the stool specimen. This is the laboratory diagnosis of the Giardia. The other parasite is the Entamoeba histolytica, which is intestinal and tissue amoeba. Entamoeba histolytica occurs in three forms, a trophozoid, a bre-cyst, and the cyst. The trophozoid is the vegetative or growing stage of the parasite. It is the only form uh, present in the tissue. It is irregular in shape and varies in size from 12 to 60 micrometer. Average being 20 micrometer. It is large and actively motile in a freshly passed uh, dysentric stool while smaller in the convalescent and the carrier. The parasite as it occurs free in the lumen as uh, a commensal is generally smaller in size about uh, 15 to 20 micrometer and has been called the minute 4. The trophozoid divide by binary fission in every 8 hours, then the trophozoid survive up to uh, 5 hours at 37 centigrade and are called by the drying heat and chemical uh, sterilization. Therefore, the infection is not uh, transmitted by a trophozoid, even if uh, live a trophozoid from a freshly past stool are ingested, they are rapidly destroyed in the stomach and cannot uh, initiate of the infection. The endamoeba histolytica cysts are present only in the lumen of the colon and in mushy or formed feces and range in size from 10 to 20 micrometer. The cysts may contain a glycogen vacuum and chromatid bodies, ileal masses of the ribonucleoprotein with characteristic rounded end. In contrast to splinter chromatids in the developing cyst of the intamoeba coli, a nuclear division occurs within the cyst, resulting in quadrinucleated cyst, and the chromatid body and glycogen vacuoles will be disappear. Diagnosis in most cases rests on the characteristic of the cyst, as trophozoites usually appear only in diarrheic feces, in active cases, and survive for only a few hours. The amoeboid trophozoid is the only form present in the tissue. The cytoplasm has two zones, a hyaline outer uh, margin and a granular inner region that may contain red blood cells, but ordinarily contains no bacteria. The life cycle of the Entamoeba histolytica, the Entamoeba histolytica where passes its life cycle only in one host, that meaning man to man or person to the other person. The infective form of the Entamoeba histolytica is the mature quadrinucleate cyst which passed in the feces of the convalescent and the carrier then the cyst can be remain viable under moist uh, condition for about 10 days. The mode of the transmission of the uh, intamoeba histolytica is the uh, during uh, uh, the man uh, will be acquires infection by swallowing food and water contaminated with the cyst. 
of, as the cyst wall is resistant to action of the gastric juice, the cyst pass through the stomach and uh, damaged and enter the small intestine. The existation uh, occurring in the uh, cecum or lower part of the ileum due to the alkaline medium, the cyst wall is damaged by the trypsin leading to the existation. The cytoplasm gets detached from the cyst wall and amoeboid movement appear, causing a tear in the cyst wall through which a quadrinucleate amoeba is liberated. This stage is called the metacyst. The metacystic uh, uh, trophozoid in which the nuclei in the metacyst uh, immediately undergo division to form eight nuclei, each of which gets sur surrounded by its own cytoplasm to become eight small uh, ambiola or metacystic trophozoid. If existation takes place in the small intestine, the metacystic trophozoid don't colonize there but are carried to the cecum. The optimal habitat for the metacystic trophozoid is the submucosal tissue of the cecum and colon, where they lodge in the glandular crypts and grow uh, by binary fission. Some develop into pre-cystic form and cysts, which are passed in the feces to repeat the life cycle. The entire life cycle thus completed in one host. In some cases, the intamoeba histolytica remains as commensal in the large intestine without causing any ill effects. Such persons become carriers or asymptomatic cysts will be passers and are responsible for the maintenance and spread of the infection in the community. Sometimes the infection may be activated and the clinical disease uh, uh, will be uh, appear. Such latency and reactivation are the characteristic of the amoebiosis. This is the life cycle of the, uh, of the intamoeba histolytica. The pathogenesis and the clinical features of the amoebiosis in which the intamoeba histolytica will be causes intestinal and extraintestinal amoebiosis. Incubation period is highly variable. On an average, it ranges from 4 days to 4 months. Amoebiasis can present in different forms and degree of severity depending on the organ affected and the extent of the damage caused. Intestinal amoebiasis uh, is the lumen dwelling amoeba don't cause any illness. They cause disease only when they invade the intestinal tissue. This uh, happens in only in about 10% of the cases of infection, while the remaining uh, it's about 90% being asymptomatic. Not all the strains of the intamoeba histolytica are pathogenic or invasive by the use of the genetic markers or monoclonal antibody and zymodeme analysis. There are some factors will be affecting on the virulence of the intamoeba histolytica, and these factors are the amoebic cysteine proteinase, which inactivates a complement factor C3, is an important virulence factor. The amoebic lectin and ionophore protein are other virulence factors. Also, the host factors such as stress, malnutrition, alcoholism, corticosteroid therapy, and immunodeficiency will be influence the course of the infection. Glycoproteins in the colonic mucus, uh, mu uh, mucus blocks the attachment of the trophozoid to the epithelial cells and will be alteration in the nature and quality of the colonic mucus may influence uh, of the, on the virulence. 
Also, the virulence may also be co uh, conditioned by the bacterial flora in the uh, colon. The pathology and pathogenesis of the invasive uh, amoebiasis it is estimated that approximately 50 million cases of invasive disease occur each year. With up to 100,000 deaths, disease results when the trophozoid of the intamoeba histolytica will invade the intestinal epithelium and form discrete ulcer with pinhead size center and raised edges from which mucus, necrotic cells, and amoeba will be passed. The trophozoid multiply and accumulate above the muscularis mucosa, often spreading laterally. A rapid lateral spread of the multiplying amoeba follows, undermining the mucosa and producing the characteristic flask shape ulcer of primary amoebiasis. A small points of entry leading via a narrow neck through the mucosa into an expanded necrotic area in the mucosa. This is the figure uh, appeared the flask shape ulcers uh, that caused by invasive intamoeba histolytica. Bacterial invasion usually does not occur at this time. Cellular reaction is limited and damage is by lytic necrosis and uh, subsequent spread may uh, coalesce colonies of the amoeba. Undermining large area of the mucosal surface, trophozoid perforation may penetrate the muscles layers and occasionally the serosa leading to a, a peritoneal cavity, subsequent enlargement of the necrotic area produ produces gross changes in the ulcer, which may develop shaggy over, uh, overhanging uh, ages. Secondary bacterial invasion and accumulation of the neutrophilic leukocytes uh, will be uh, will be a uh, secondary intestinal lesion may develop as extension from the primary lesion usually in the cecum abandings uh, appendix or nearby portion of the scanning colon the organism may travel to the ileocecal valve and terminal ileum producing a chronic infection the sigmoid colon and rectum are favored sites for lateral lesions. An amoebic infl uh, inflammatory or a granulomatous tumor like mass amoeboma may form on the intestinal wall, sometimes growing sufficiently large to block the lumen. There are some factors will determining the invasion of the amoeba and these are the number of the amoeba ingested, the pathogenic capacity of the parasitic strain, host factor such as gut motility and immune competence, and the presence of the sociable enteric bacteria that enhance amoebic growth. Correct identification of the intamoeba species remains a critical problem. Trophozoid, especially with RBC in the cytoplasm found in the liquid or semi-formed stool. The, the laboratory diagnosis of the intamoeba histolytica, uh, either be of the intestinal ambiosis or amoebic liver abscess. For intestinal amoebiasis, uh, depending on the other stool examination, uh, which including the microscopy, macroscopy, iodine stand preparation, uh, trachome stand preparation to demonstrate the trophozoid or the cyst, and uh, even the stool culture, uh, mucosal scrapings, serodiagnosis, and molecular diagnosis. 
while the laboratory diagnosis of the amoebic liver abscess uh, including the microscopy, histopathological examination, uh, serodiagnosis, radiological examination, and for stool examination. This is the laboratory diagnosis of the Entamoeba histolytica. Other species of parasite is the Cryptosporidium parvum or Cryptosporidium hominis, which consider as intestinal sporozoa. And these species of parasites may be cause infection uh, and may be found in the stomach, appendix, colon, rectum, and pulmonary tree. Can infect the intestine in immunocompromised person, for example, those with AIDS, and cause severe intractable diarrhea have probably been uh, an uh, unrecognized cause of self-limited limited mild gastroenteritis and diarrhea in the humans. These parasites during its life cycle have several stages during its life cycle, uh, uh, including the oocyst, sporozoids, uh, female uh, macrogametes, and male microgametes. The oocysts measuring 4 to 5 micrometers are passed in the feces in enormous numbers and are immediately infectious. When oocysts and contaminated food and water are ingested, uh, the, the second stage of life cycle, the sporozoid will be exist and invade intestinal cells. Then the parasites multiply, multiply asexually within the apical portion of the intestinal cells and uh, are released and uh, infect other intestinal cells to begin a new cycle. They also reproduce sexually, forming male microgomans and female microgomans that fuse and develop into the uh, oocyst. The life cycle of the uh, Cryptosporidium barbum usually complete its life cycle sexual and asexual phases in a single host uh, and the normal host of these parasites are the man and containing on the reservoir host uh, uh, the man, the cattle, the cats and the dog. The man can be acquired the infection by ingestion of the food and water contaminated with the feces that containing on the uh, infection uh, infectious stage cyst. And other uh, mode of transmission is the auto infection. The infective form of these parasites are the sporulated OO cysts. And each oocyst containing on the four uh, sporozoids, uh, or which named as the sporulated oocyst. These uh, uh, will be released from the intestine. The sporozoid develop into uh, trophozoids uh, within the uh, the parasitoferrous vacuoles in the brush border of the intestine. The trophozoid undergo a sexual multiplication schizogony to produce type 1 merons. This is the type 1 merons, and then 8 merozoids will be released. From each type 1 merons, these merozoids enter adjacent epithelial cells to repeat schizogony. Or from uh, or form type two neurons which undergo gametogony. Then, our stage or our life cycle, who will asexual reproduction or asexual cycle. Then, these uh, merozoid that releasing from this cycle undergo to the uh, uh, the second type of reproduction, who a sexual cycle. And the, the other man have four merozoids are released from each type two merons. The merozoids enter host cells to form sexual stage, little micro gametes and macro gametes. 
and these macro and micro gametes will be fertilization to uh, to uh, releasing of the zygote will be formed and develop into the oocyst um, and these oocysts will be undergo sporogony to form sporulated oocysts only containing on the four sporozoids. The sporulated oocysts are released into the feces and transmit the infection from one person to another. Some of the oocysts have a thin wall surrounding four sporozoids and are called the thin walled oocysts. These oocysts infect the same host and maintain the cycle of auto-infection. The oocysts are fully mature and released and are infective immediately without further development. This is the life cycle of the Cryptosporidium parvum. And pathogenesis of the Cryptosporidium barvum. Cryptosporidium inhabit the brush border of the mucosal epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal intestinal, uh, tract, especially the surface of the villi of the lower small power. The prominent uh, clinical features of the Cryptosporidiosis is watery diarrhea, which is mild and self limited in about one to two weeks in normal persons. But but The uh, may be severe and a prolonged and immunocompromised or very young or old individual. The small intestine is the most commonly infected site, but cryptosporidium infections have also been found in other organs, including uh, other digestive tract organs and the lungs. The diagnosis of the cryptosporidiosis depends on the detection of the oocysts in the fresh stool samples, stool concentration technique using a modified acid fast stain are usually necessary and monoclonal antibody based tests are available that can detect low levels of the fecal antigen. Now we're talking about the parasitic elements or worms of the humans belong to the two phyla. The first phylum is the nematode, the round worms, and the blood elements is the flat worms. The nematodes are among the most species and diverse animals. They are elongated and tapered at both ends, round in the cross section, and unsegmented. They have only a set of longitudinal muscles which allows them to move in a whip-like penetrating fashion, a complete digestive system that is well adapted for ingestion of the host gut contents, cells, blood, or cellular uh, breakdown products, and a highly developed separate sex reproductive system they shed their tough uh, cuticles molt as they undergo development from larva to adults. And the eggs and larval stage are well situated for survival in the external environment. Most human infections are acquired by ingestion of the egg or larval stage. But nematode infections can also be acquired from insect vectors, uh, vectors and the skin penetration. The second is the type of the uh, nematode or helminth is the blatty helminth are flat worms that are dorsoventrally flattened in cross section and are hermaphroditic, with a few exceptions. All medically important species belong to two grasses, trematode flukes and cystode tape worms. Trematode 
are typically flattened and leaf shaped with two muscular suckers. They have bifurcated guts and possess both circular and longitudinal muscles. They lack the cuticle characteristic of nematode and instead have syncytial epithelium. Trematodes are hermaphroditic, with the exception of the cystosomes, leal blood flukes, which have male and female worms that exist coupled together within a small blood vessels of their host. The life cycles of the human trematode is typically initiated when eggs are passed into the fresh water via feces or urine. Eggs develop, hatch, and release a ciliated uh, miracidium, which infects a snail host that is usually highly specific to the fluke species, and these snails consider as the first intermediate host. And within the snails, the miracidium developed into the second stage, the sporocyst, which contains germinal cells that ultimately develop into the final larval stage, the circaria. These swim out of the snail and insist as metacircaria in a second intermediate host or on the vegetation. Depending, uh, depending on the species, most fluke infections are acquired by ingestion of the metacircaria. The circaria of the cystosomes, however, directly penetrate the skin of their host and don't insist on the metacircaria. This is this stage are, uh, of the uh, trematode, uh, beginning with the eggs. Miracidium, then sporocyst, circaria, and some type or some species of the trematode have metacircaria. Cystodes or tape bombs are flat and have a ribbon like chain of segments, proglottids, containing male and female reproductive structures. Adult tear bombs can reach length of 10 meters and have hundreds of these segments. With each segment releasing thousands of the eggs, at the interior end of in the adult tear bomb uh, is the scolex head, that's uh, a head or scolex containing on the suckers or uh, hooks or structures that aid in its ability to attach to the intestinal wall. Adult tape worm have no mouth or guts and absorb their nutrients directly from their host through their integuments. The life cycle of the cystode, like that of the trematode, is usually indirect, involving one or more intermediate host and a final host. Eggs are excreted with the feces and ingested by intermediate hosts either invertebrates such as flea or vertebrates such as mammal. The larva develop into serine forms that are uh, peculiar to the specific species within the intermediate host, sister circles in the case of the teniosolium or hydatidsis with echinococcus granulosus. Cystos larva are generally eaten and the larva develop into an adult worm in the intestine of the final host. Intestinal helminthic infections Most intestinal helminthic infections are fairly benign, except when worm burdens are high and numbers of adult worms in the intestine reach the hundreds. In these form of infections, the intestine usually harbors the adult stage of the parasite, except for Strongyloides, Trachinella, and Tinea solium, which not only uh, reside in the intestine as adults, but also have larvae capable of migrating throughout the tissue. Most nematode infections are acquired via the fecal oral route, with human behaviors and poor sanitation and hygiene contributing to the transmission. 
In the case of the three most common intestinal infections, whipworms, hookworms, and escariasis, the eggs require incubation in the soil for several days or weeks in the warm tropical climates. الآن نأخذ بعض الأمثلة عن الديدان وأول species هو الانتروبيوس vermiculares the common name of these species of parasites is the pinworm intestinal nematodes female pinworms about 10 mm in length have a slender pointed posterior end males are approximately 3 mm in length and have a curved posterior end Pinworms are found worldwide but more commonly in temperate than tropical climates. They are the most common helminthic infection in the children. We see in these figures the um, adult worm of the Enterobius vermicularis. Uh, we see the adults are short, white, and uh, uh, with the pointed end looking like bits of white thread. The mouth uh, is surrounded by a three uh, wing like a cuticular expansions uh, which are uh, transversely uh, situated. أما بالنسبة إلى الفجر الثانية نشوف بها الأيج والأيج are uh, has characteristic shape being uh, elongated uh, avoid flattened uh, on one end and convex on the other uh, other end uh, the egg shell is double layered and relatively thick so transparent the outer albuminous layer makes the egg stick to each other and uh, to uh, clothing and uh, other objects the egg contained uh, containing on the coiled uh, embryo which is fully formed but becomes infectious only six hours after being deposited on the skin under cool moist condition the egg remains available for about two weeks a single uh, female worm lie about uh, five thousands to uh, seventeen uh, thousands egg now we talk the life cycle of the Enterobius vermicularis is uh, pounding its uh, entire life cycle in the human host. It has no intermediate host and does not undergo any systemic migration. The general natural host of the Enterobius vermicularis is the man, while the infective form is the embryonated egg. A uh, man acquires infection by ingestion of the embryonated egg containing larva by means of the contaminated fingers or by auto-infection. Eggs uh, can be laid uh, on a perianal uh, skin containing infective uh, larva are swallowed and hatch out in the intestine. They molt in the ileum and enter the cecum where they mature into adult. It takes from two weeks to two months from the time two eggs are ingested to the development of the gravid female ready to lay uh, the eggs. The gravid female migrates down the colon to the rectum at the night when the horse is in the bed. The worm comes out through the anus and crawls about on the uh, perianal and uh, perianal skin to lay its uh, sticky eggs. The worm may retreat into the anal canal and uh, come out again to lay more eggs. The female worm may wander into the vulva, vagina, and even into the uterus and uh, for, uh, fallopian uh, tubes, sometimes reaching the peritoneum. The male is seldom seen as it does not migrate. It usually dies after me uh, meeting and is passed in the feces. 
when all of the eggs are laid the female worm dies or uh, gets crushed by the host during scratching the worm may often be seen on the feces having been passively carried from the rectum the eggs however are only infrequently found in the feces as the female worm lies egg in the uh, perianal area and not in the rectum now uh, there are uh, uh, the mode of infection of these species of parasite either by auto infection or by retro infection the auto infection ingestion of the egg due to the scratching of the perianal area with fingers leading to deposition of the eggs under the nails this type of infection is mostly common in children this mode of infection occurs from anus to the mouth while the uh, retro infection in this process the egg laid on the perianal skin immediately hatch into the infective stage larva and migrate through the anus to develop into worm in the colon this mode of infection occurs from anus to the colon pathology and pathogenesis of the enterobius vermicularis the main symptoms associated with pinworm infection is perianal pruritus especially at the night caused by hypersensitivity reaction to the eggs that are laid around the perianal region by female worms which migrate down from the colon at the night scratching the anal region promote transmission as the egg are highly infectious within hours of the being laid hand to mouth transmission irritability and uh, fatigue from a loose of sleep occur but the infection is relatively benign eggs are recovered using the scotch uh, tape technique in the morning before uh, a power uh, movement transparent scotch tape is applied directly to the perianal area and then placed on the microscope slide for examination. Other example of the uh, uh, nematode is the uh, scars lipercoids, ileal human round womb. Adult scars are large, female are 20 to 50 centimeter long and males are 15 to 30 centimeter long humans acquire the infection after eggs are ingested larvae hatch in the duodenum penetrate through the mucosa and they migrate in the circulatory system lodge in the lung capillaries penetrate the alveoli and migrate from the bronchioles to the trachea and pharynx Larvae are swallowed and returned to the intestine and mature into adults. After meeting, female can release uh, 200,000 eggs per day, which are passed in the feces. Eggs are infective after about one month in the soil and are infectious for several months. We see in these figures the scars, limbricoids, round worm, the adult worm, which are large cylindrical worm with tapering end and the interior end being more pointed than the posterior. They are pale pink or flesh colored when freshly passed in the stool but become white outside uh, of the body. The mouth at the interior end and has three finally toothed lips, one dorsal and two ventrolateral lips. The life cycle of the scars limbricoids involve only one host. The natural host of the scars limbricoids are the man and there is no intermediate host and the infective form are the embryonated egg. The mode of a transmission of scars in which the infection occurs 
when the egg that containing on the infective stage of the scars which is called the rapidity form larva uh, that will be swallowed and a frequent mode of transmission is through fresh vegetables ground in the fields and uh, drinking of the contaminated uh, water also the the fertilized egg that passed in the feces is not immediately infective it has to undergo a period of incubation in the soil before acquiring inf uh, infectivity the egg are resistant uh, to adverse condition and can survive for several years the development of the egg in the soil depends on the nature of the soil and various uh, environmental uh, factors uh, and the development of the egg are usually takes from 10 to 40 days during which time the embryo molts twice and become the infective rapidity form larva coiled up within the eggs when the uh, swallowed eggs reach the duodenum the larva will be hatched out and then the rapidity form larva is about uh, 250 micrometer in length and 14, 14 micrometer in diameter are actively uh, motile they penetrate the intestinal mucosa and the portal uh, vessels and are carried to the liver they then pass via the hepatic vein inferior vena cava and the right side of the heart and in about four days reach the lungs where they grow and mold twice after development in the lungs in about 10 to 15 days the larva uh, will be uh, uh, brace uh, the lung capillaries and uh, reach the alveoli they crawl up or are carried up the respiratory passage to the throat and are swallowed again the larva will be mouth finally and develop into adults in the upper part of the small intestine they become sexually mature in about 6 to 12 weeks and the gravid female start laying eggs to repeat the life cycle of the scars lymphocytes pathology and pathogenesis of the scars lymphocytes if present in high numbers adult form may cause mechanical obstruction of the bowel and bile of uh, and pancreatic duct worm to uh, tend to migrate if the uh, drugs will be given leading to the bowel perforation and a peritonitis anal passage of the worms vomiting and abdominal pain larvae migrating through lungs induce an infl uh, inflammatory response uh, pneumonitis especially after second infection leading to the bronchial spasm mucus production and lofilar's syndromes cough Xenophilia and pulmonary infiltrates. The other examples of the uh, worms is the cystode, like Tinea saginata and Tinea solium. The Tinea saginata is beef tape worm, intestinal cystode and tinea solium pork tapeworm intestinal and tissue cystode if humans eat uh, measly beef or measly pork containing the bladder like larvae which is called the cystocerci they acquire infections of the tinea saginata and tinea solium respectively the cystocerci which are about the size of the bees develop into adult worm that can reach length of the several meters in the intestine adult worms generally cause a few problems and most are asymptomatic mild intestinal symptoms include diarrhea and abdominal pain 
In the intestine, egg fold terminal segment break off from the adult womb and pass out with the human feces. When the egg from the human feces are consumed by the cow, uh, in the case of the species of tinea serginata or pigs in the tinea solium, larvae hatch from the egg, migrate and insist as sister cerci in the various tissues including cow, uh, cow muscle, muscles, beef or big muscles, pork. Humans become infected when they eat uh, raw or undercooked meat containing the sister cerci. These sister cerci then developed into adult worm in the human intestine. The pathology and pathogenesis of the tinea uh, saginata and tinea solium One medically significant difference between tinea saginata and tinea solium is that a human can be the intermediate host for tinea solium similar to the pigs. Thus, if the humans ingest uh, the tinea solium eggs, the sister cerci insist in the various human tissue, including the skin, muscle, kidney, heart, liver, and the brain. This condition in a human is known as the cystocercosis and symptoms are associated with the involved tissues. In a neurocystocercosis, uh, the symptoms including headache, nausea, vomiting, mental disturbances, and seizures caused by the cystocerci uh, in the brain. With the beef tape worm, tinea saginata adult worm developed only in the humans and sister cerci of the tinea saginata don't develop in humans only in the cattle or other herbivores the pheobotherium latum proud fish tape worm intestinal cystode the pheobotherium latum the proud fish tape worm of the humans and many other fish eating animals Reach enormous size, sometimes exceeding 10 meter in length. A human acquire the infection when they are uh, eat uh, improperly cooked or raw fish that is infected with the larvae known as the blerocercoid, which look like white grains of the rice in the fish flesh. In the intestine, the worm rapidly grows and develops a chain of segment capable of the releasing more than 1 million egg per day. The life cycles of the uh, uh, Daphylobotherium latum, uh, which is caused a disease called Daphylobotheriasis, begins when the human ingests the uh, raw or undercooked infected fish that containing on the infective stage of the Daphylobotherium latum, which is called the blerocercoid larvae. And these will be uh, hatching in the small intestine and grow up to uh, convert it to the adult womb. And this adult womb will be uh, 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 giving uh, proglotid that releasing uh, uh, immature eggs with the feces of the uh, human. An embryonated egg will be passed in the feces and in the water will be uh, converted to the embryonated egg. This embryonated egg hatch to releasing of the second stage of the Daphylobotherium latum, which is called the Corocidia, that is swimming in the water under eaten uh, by the first intermediate host, which is called the Crustaceans and inside the crustacean converted to the other stage of the Daphylobotherium latum, which is called the Procercoid. When this uh, crustacean eating by the second intermediate host, the small fish converted inside this fish to the other stage called the Blerocercoid, which is considered as the infective stage, of uh, the Daphylobotherium uh, latum and cause infection to the human when uh, the human eaten uh, infected uh, under cooked 
uh, fish. The pathology and pathogenesis of Daphidiobotherium latum, the disease caused by tapeworm, is chiefly a vague abdominal discomfort and loss of the habitat, leading to the weight loss. Daphidiobotherium latum has an unusual capacity to absorb vitamin B12, and among some groups, a vitamin B12 deficiency leading to the various levels of the pernicious anemia may rarely developed.